Welcome to K-State Online. I'm Mason Voth. That's Derek Young. And the Wildcats lost in Columbia today, 30-27. to Started off perfectly for the Cats. They drove down the field. They looked good. They scored. Got a little bit of luck there on a tip ball that Phillip Brooks ran right under. And it seemed like, okay, maybe K-State's going to be the real deal here. And then the defense had to hit the field. And the guy named Luther Burden that we talked about all week, he had some big plays. It helped Missouri, and the Tigers had a halftime lead. But K-State came out. The defense started to settle in in the later parts of the second quarter, and they came out, did well. The Cats took the lead, and they had the ball up 24-20. And at that point, you're thinking, okay, they go down, make something happen. They might be able to pull this thing out. The problem was costly mistake with a delay of game penalty that they didn't want to take, moved him back. They were terrible in short yardage situations all day, and, uh, you know, just it, it didn't work out for them. So, I guess we'll start with just the, the instant takeaway and, and what doomed K-State today, D.Y. Missed opportunities. You could say that the defense was lackluster in the first half. You can say the offense was lack, excuse me, lackluster in the second half. But there was multiple chances for Kansas State to capitalize when the defense did hit their stride. They went about six, seven straight possessions, only allowed three points, and the score was still stuck on, I think it was 24-20 for way too long. The offense uh, appeared to be comfortable sitting on the ball a little bit. I thought, I don't know if that was a philosophical understanding there or just um, trying to adapt to life without Will Howard being 100% because he was clearly affected by the injury today. But uh, I thought it was just missed opportunities, bad penalties. Um, Both teams, you know, guilty of both of those. Mizzou, you know, probably because they have the ball last and are at home, are able to overcome their hurdles and win the game rather than Kansas State. Yeah, I mean, Missouri, you know, gets it skipped to the end of the game. Harrison Mevis hits a 61-yarder to beat the Cats, and it became a 61-yarder after Missouri took an just unforgivable delay of game penalty where nobody that should have been aware of the situation realized that there was no timeout called and that the play clock was running, and that was almost a disastrous error for them. And I think for K-State, those disastrous errors did happen at other points in the game, like, you know, the delay of game that moved them back on third down that was significant. Some key drops, Chris Kleiman made sure to point those out, and he was right to do so because Treshawn Ward and Ben Sennett had some key drops in this game, and I think the Sennett one that would have been for a first down probably is the, the most painful one. And it just, you know, one of those days for K-State where we knew going into this what their problems were, and we knew what Missouri was good at, and the problem for K-State was what Mizzou was good at coincided with what K-State was bad at. The Tigers took advantage of it. They got the job done, and uh, now the Wildcats have to kind of find a way to move on from this. Yeah, they're going to have to pick themselves off the mat. They should be able to do that because they're a mature, experienced team with you know a strong foundation set forth for them, but this one stings. Um, because of the opponent and because of the way – Mizzou didn't play the Ray game. Um, they they had some crippling mistakes, like the penalty you alluded to. That penalty, that delay game that Missouri took, one of the worst penalties I've ever seen taken in a college football game. Um, downright, you know, unforgivable. At the same time, Kansas State had a few mistakes that were in that ballpark and probably one too many, and that cost them. But at the end of the day, for me, it's like when they got up 24-20 and had the ball around midfield, on two separate occasions, they weren't able to do anything with it. And the lack of those missed opportunities, which is where a couple of those drops also happened, is what really opened the door for Mizzou because the Tigers gave Kansas State an opportunity to step on their throat, and the Wildcats didn't do it. Yep, K-State, if you, know, if you, if you think you're the team that you are, you have to go out and finish it off. And when you get the ball midfield 24-20, you have that opportunity. K-State should have gone out scored and once you get up by two scores there I, I think if K-State had gone up 31-20 in that situation the game's probably over there the defense was playing well enough and the, the issue ends up being that Chris Kleiman I think maybe trusted the defense a little too much where he just kind of kept pushing it saying hey the defense has kept us in this game they've helped us get here they've helped us get here we are going to to give them another chance and you just push one side of the ball to do too much I think it can put you in a bad spot and that's ultimately what happened now Let's talk real quick about whatever nickname you have for him. The Golden Boy, the Chosen One, those are the ones that I've, I've relied on for narratives. Avery Johnson got some serious run in this game today, and Will Howard looked banged up. What did you make of Avery Johnson's play, his usage, and then the likelihood we see him in a much heavier setting next week against UCF? I had no problem with his usage. I actually 
had an inkling that he would be a part of today's game plan for Kansas State, and he certainly was. And I don't think it ever really disrupted the rhythm or what the offense was doing. So from that standpoint, I thought they had a good plan. My only, I guess you could call it criticism, but maybe a question is is uh, maybe it wasn't enough. Um, and that's not to say pull Will Howard from the game, but he was clearly hobbled. Um, there was a time where he could have got probably three or four extra yards. He, he instead chooses to slide. Not a lot of players would in that situation. If Will Howard's healthy, he wouldn't in that situation. So you're sacrificing those yards. Is it worth it in some situations? Probably not. I, I also, and they know more than me, so maybe there's a, a thought behind it. I thought it was weird that Will Howard remained on the field every time that Avery Johnson was under center because you knew nothing was going to happen out there with Will Howard wide. And you also knew that Avery Johnson was the quarterback because he was under center. So it wasn't tricking anyone. You were just kind of, you know, choosing to go 10 on 11 almost. So I thought that was a, a little questionable. But at the end of the day, I just thought some of those third and shorts where they took Avery Johnson out after one or two plays where he got positive yardage, average six, seven yards a carry, I thought maybe leaving him on the field for another play or two. I thought they pulled him probably – quicker than they should have in some cases and you know looking forward to next week not that there's a quarterback debate at all I don't think that there is um, I don't think Kansas State thinks that there is but you gotta wonder if we do see more Avery Johnson just because I mean I don't I mean there's zero percent that Will Howard's gonna be 100 percent next week so they're gonna need Avery to some extent by how much who knows but it might be more than today yeah, we'll see. UCF is a team. They're hobbled at quarterback, too. John Rice Plumley not going to be playing next week. Gus Malzahn confirmed that already at the start of this week. And so UCF will be a little bit of a wounded dog. It'll be a good bounce-back opportunity for K-State. they got to go take advantage of it, and I think they have to go out and prove that what we've seen the first three weeks of the season is just bad performances from a team that is better than that as opposed to if you play too many more games like what we saw against Missouri – and the kind of the lulls that we saw against SEMO and against Troy, that ultimately just manifests into you're not as good of a team as we thought you were, and you're probably more in line to what you know a lot of the other Big 12 schools are looking like right now because the Big 12 as a whole is wide open at this point in time. Texas is clearly at the top right now, and everybody else is in there. I still think you know we'll see how Oklahoma hand handles Tulsa today, but I think K-State's still probably the second or third best team in this league. It's just a matter now if they can actually go out and prove it on the field as opposed to continuing to make mistakes and kind of shoot themselves in the foot. One area that might help Christian Duffy will be back in some capacity last week. Chris Kleiman said that after the game. So we'll see. Uh, final thoughts from Farofield D.Y. I think they got to get healthier, and part of that will come when Christian Duffy returns perhaps next week in at least some limited fashion. Part of it is also they got to run the football. Um, they didn't have faith to run the football. That's why Avery Johnson had his package. And they, they got to get more explosive somehow. Um, I think only had just a couple plays over 20 yards today. Um, it really puts a lot of pressure on you to be perfect on a lot of snaps to string together long drives. Missouri was more explosive. Um, they were not forced to sustain long drives as much as Kansas State. And I think that was also a factor. And, you know, how do you get more explosive? Maybe that's more Keegan Johnson. Uh, that's another guy we still haven't seen a ton of yet. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that really is the kicker. I mean, you, you can go back and think how, how many times was K-State – explosive at all today really there are very few moments in that so it's going to be a pretty long week for k-state i'm sure a long week for k-state fans an even longer drive home if you made the drive to columbia but we'll see what the wildcats have in store when they return home next week against ucf and then honestly it's early in the season the bye week might be at the right time this year for k-state if will Howard is not at 100 percent because after ucf a week off to prepare for their friday matchup in stillwater against oklahoma state so that will do it from columbia for Derek young i'm mason voth you've been watching k-state online